Today I wanted to talk to you about how I contain my bamboos because obviously in all my videos, you know, you see that I have quite a few and I get asked that question quite frequently. But before we get to the point of how to contain them, we have to have a look what bamboos I actually have. I have clumpers as well as runners. My clumpers are always fagasias. And the way bamboos grow is through rhizomes. With the clumpers, the rhizomes stay close to the original place where you basically plant the plants. So if you have a plant that starts off this size, it will be about this wide in about you know, three or four years. Or that wide and that wide. So it just keeps on going, getting wider, but close to the original plant. Then you have the runners, which are, for example, I have Psoidosasa japonica and I have many different Philia stachyses. Those are the runners. And their rhizomes grow shallow under the ground and all of a sudden you've got these fuckers popping up all over the place. You know, not miles away from where you planted them, but definitely several feet away from where you plant them. And obviously those are the ones we're talking about today, which need to be contained. And trust me, many of my neighbors, when they see the bamboo, <laughs> you see the horror in their face because they're thinking, oh, I'm gonna have this in my garden. But no, if you know what you're doing, if you know the basic idea of how to contain running bamboo, it's the most beautiful plant you can possibly have in a garden. So the three different techniques I have in my garden is the HDPE, a high density polyethene rhizome barrier membrane. And then I have rhizome trenches. And then I also just, you know, cut them up, cut them up, cut them out. You know, so you kind of see where the columns are coming up. So you figure out where the rhizome is going and you just go in with a spade and yank those suckers out of the ground. Yeah, and those three I'm going to show you today. So the rhizome barrier, this is it. HDPE, or just bamboo rhizome barrier, that will do just fine. It comes in two thicknesses, well, at least here in Germany, two millimeters or one millimeter. This is two millimeters thick, and 70 centimeters long. You can get them in 100 meters, 100 meters, 100 centimeters long as well. A meter is round about five to seven euros, depends where you buy them. And then length, obviously, you know, infinite. I mean, you can buy them in hundreds and hundreds of meters long. Depends how much you need, obviously. You also have to buy a, a stainless steel closing strip, which goes on here on the side. You have to put it on a certain way, which clearly I didn't. The result of my mistake, I'm gonna show you in a second. But you know what, I'm a big man, I can live with my mistakes. The way I closed it was like this. And then I put the stainless steel strip all the way along here. You drill holes in it and then you screw it in with the screws provided. But what I should have done is close it like this and then put the stainless steel closing strip along here. So when a rhizome grows in the back, you know, within the confinement along here, it grows back into the grove you've just created. This way, it doesn't. This is Pseudosasa japonica, and it's a really aggressive runner, also called arrow bamboo. Anyway, I've got loads of those, and obviously I've got the barrier in there, and I put some railway sleepers in front. So you can't see it, but you still need to check behind it. So here you can see the barrier behind it. And you have to leave at least five centimeters above ground so the rhizomes don't grow over it. And trust me, because they do. This is where the stainless steel strip is. I screwed in. And as I said, I should have done the heart shaped because my mistake, now I'm paying for it. Here, see that? The rhizome is coming through here on the side. If I would have done the heart shape thing, obviously it would have grown back into the grove. But it didn't. But check this a little bit more often. Whoops. So yeah. And I'm gonna cut that up a little bit more later on. So learn from my mistakes. Do the heart shape thing. So back here I mainly work with rhizome trenches. And my rhizome trench are the width, the width of a spade or a spade's width, and about 45 centimeters deep. Rhizomes grow quite shallow, so you don't really need to dig down like, you know, meters or anything like that. So 45 centimeters will be fine. And all you do, you just go around and you check for rhizomes and when the rhizomes come through, you cut them off. So back here, that one, it's Philiostachys aureus olcata aureocalis. Lovely names, it just rolls up the tongue. And then I've got the Huang Wengsu Inversa. All of those are runners and all of them need to be contained. So I dug a massive trench. This entire area is around about 60 or 70 square meters. They have to roam free. And obviously, as you can see, they're not the biggest plants yet. They will get bigger. Ah, also, 
what I wanted to say, a difference in between Phagasias and Philostachuses. Philostachuses have the tendency to be or can get really tall. We're talking five meters, seven meters, eight meters. Where Phagasias, on the other hand, they very rarely reach more than five meters. So again, if height is an issue for you, keep that in mind. So then there's the third option, cutting. Basically, all you need is a spade and you just have to check where the rhizomes are growing. The way you find that out, you look at the culms, so you kind of see the line where the culms are coming, and then there should be the rhizome underground. And all you do is just like so even yank the spade in and cut it off and pull it out of the ground. So you see the culm is here and going along here and coming up there and obviously a little bit over there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go in with a spade and start lifting. And then obviously, you know, you go in and start fingering a little bit to feel, oh, there it is. And then you go in here to cut that part off the main plant. And here we go. And Bob is your non-binary uncle. So now that I dug this thing up, and by God, with all the cats shitting on the property, it smelled like a public toilet. <laughs> Pass. Anyway, uh, this is what grows underground. These are the rhizomes. So as you can see here, and then these are the uh, nodes that come up and become culms. These are the ones you can see above ground. And obviously all of this was grown underneath the ground. So you can't see it, obviously. So what you do is when you see one of these coming up, going, okay, there's a rhizome obviously going further along. You just go in with a spade and then you have to dig up the rhizome. Nobody gives two hoots about the fibrous roots. They can stay in the ground because they don't do anything by themselves, but the rhizome needs to come out. Otherwise it can continue to grow. Anyway, so much to running bamboos. And obviously, you know, I don't know whether there is any specific spacing in between, but these things, I mean, the rhizomes can be quite a few meters underground before you have a calm coming up. On the other hand, just do the rhizome trench or do the rhizome barrier. I think that's all I have to say right now. We're done for the day. Go out there and plant bamboo and watch the horror in your neighbor's eyes. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you guys later.